learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of modern theories of trade, identify the changing dimensions of trade that explain the progress from traditional to modern theories of trade, learn about country similarity theory, analyze the relocation of production through various stages of product life cycle. Introduction Theories of Trade The theories of trade are categorized into two parts, traditional theories and modern theories of trade. The traditional theories include mercantilism, absolute advantage, comparative advantage and heschker ohlin theory which emphasize on trade between countries. These theories are considered country specific. For example, if a country is specialized in producing a product for which it is getting an absolute or comparative advantage, then it will get a similar advantage by exporting that product and importing another product from another country. As against traditional theories, modern theories of trade which are considered firm specific emerged after World War II. These theories basically evolved due to the growing importance of multinational corporations in post-war international economy. Now the focus has been shifted from traditional country-based trade theories to modern firm-based theories. This is because of the expansion of the multinational companies was not addressed by classical economists. Moreover, intra-trade was not taken into account, which refers to trade between two countries of goods produced in the same industry. Product and service factors including brand loyalty, technological innovation and better quality are incorporated by modern theories for understanding trade flows. These theories are categorized as follows. The first one being country similarity theory. The second one being product life cycle theory. The third one being new trade theory. The fourth one being Potter's national diamond competitive advantage theory. Changing dimensions from traditional to modern theories of trade. Comparison between traditional and modern theories of trade. Traditionally, trade is explained by Adam Smith through absolute advantage and by Ricardo through comparative advantage. But in case of heschker ohlin theory, supply of factors basically explain and control trade which arise from locally abundant factor endowments. There are some dimensions of trade which explain the progress from classical to modern theories of trade. The first one being the traditional theories are considered country specific whereas modern theories are considered firm specific. The concept of traditional theories is explained in terms of labor theory of value while the phenomenon of modern theories is based on general equilibrium theory of value. One factor labor model is presented by classical economist while the modern theory is more realistic and is presented by multi-factor which are labor and capital model. Classical theories are more useful in explaining the trade of homogeneous undifferentiated products. Example being agricultural goods, aluminium, crude oil etc. On the other hand modern theories are more useful in understanding trade of heterogeneous differentiated products example being personal care products electronic goods etc the traditional theories put more emphasis on gains from trade but the modern theory emphasizes on trade structure and forms the basis of trade traditional economists aim at improving the welfare of every individual not making anyone worse off however the assumption does not hold in case of modern theories the traditional theory is recognized as a single market theory of value whereas the modern theory is also known as multi-market theory of value. Differences in comparative advantage are attributed by classical economists to differences in production functions. In contrast to classical economists, there are similar production functions in modern theories. These production functions attribute the differences in comparative advantage to factors proportion differences which exist between countries. To start with the country similarity theory, many difficulties arise in providing the empirical evidence of factor proportions theory in the 1960s, which led to find for new determinants of trade between countries. Henceforth, Staffan Linder, a Swedish economist, proposed a new framework called country similarity theory. Initially, he made efforts to explain intra-industry trade. This theory explained that 
consumers in countries might have similar preferences if they are exposed to the same development stage. This is of the firm based theories which signify that company should initially produce from the domestic use. Later, when companies start exporting, they explore that the markets which are similar in terms of customer preferences to the domestic counterpart will provide them the best for success. Lenders work focused on the customer preferences. That is the demand side rather than on the production or supply side. He also explained that mostly trade in manufactured goods will occur between countries which have same per capita income. Therefore, this will result in common intra-industry trade. Further, he categorized international trade into two parts. The first one being the primary products that are natural resources, products and manufacturers. This theory proposed that theory in primary product is explained by differences in factor endowments but not in manufacturers. Rather, these manufactured exports are determined by internal demand. However, developed nations examined international trade in manufacturers because these nations are specialized in exporting goods which they manufacture domestically and only those goods are manufactured domestically by them for which there is greater demand at home. For instance, if two countries like USA and UK have identical demand preferences, then their consumers and investors want to look for the same product having identical quality and hence they fulfill their demand of having the same goods. This shows preference similarity which encourages trade between these industrialized countries. The figure shows similarity between countries in terms of their location, culture and also considering their legal aspect. The country similarity in terms of location can be found in Finland and Russia which are having a similar location. The country similarity in terms of culture can be seen between European countries which are having the same culture. The country similarity in terms of political aspects can be seen between India and USSR trade as it is similar because politically they were both socialist countries. He further raised an argument to find whether per capita income is most important one or not. Countries having high per capita income will demand high quality goods which are the consumer goods or it can be capital goods. On the other hand, countries having low per capita income will demand low luxury goods. Hence countries that gain find it profitable to export their products in other countries where the demand for those products is high. Similarly, manufactured exports of poor countries should look for reputed markets in other poor countries having identical demand structures. Moreover, this firm based theory plays an important role in understanding trade in products where brand loyalty reputation of a product, its quality etc. are significant factors in consumers buying process. The next one is the product life cycle theory. Product life cycle theory was developed by Raymond Vernon of Harvard Business School in the mid 1960s. A new approach has been suggested in which various changes will occur in the newly established product in the market and then get standardized in production. The main proposition of the theory is to locate production shifts when products move through various stages of product life cycle. Vernon significantly diverged from traditional theories and put emphasis on the product rather than factor proportions. A three-stage model is proposed by Vernon to demonstrate the behavior of the US exports of manufacturers as shown in the figure. The main assumption of this model is that the effects which occur in exports due to innovation and creativity in the product are undermined by the technological diffusion and lower cost abroad. This model further assumed United States as an innovative country firm which initially specialized in exporting products to other advanced countries. Vernon's theory was based on the proposition that most of the world's new products had been produced by United States firms and then sold initially in the home market but it doesn't mean that the product should be produced in United States itself. There might be a possibility of producing that product somewhere else at a lower cost and then exported back to United States. Further, the argument rose that mostly products were initially established in US, simultaneously assuming the certainty and the uncertainty and risk introducing newly established products. The firms found better to set production facilities apparently close to the market. 
The three stages are as follows. The first one being the new product stage. The second one being the maturing product stage. The third one being the standardized product stage. The stages of product life cycle can now be discussed. The stage one involves the new product. Initially in the life cycle of a new product, large amount of capital and skill labor are necessary for research and development which is also known as R&D. In this stage, the demand is growing rapidly in United States whereas the demand in other advanced countries is lacking as compared to highly advanced countries. The product is considered non-standardized due to which it requires flexibility. Thus production costs are quite high. It is also useless for other advanced countries to produce the product on their own because of the limited demand. Hence, it is worthwhile for them to export the product from the United States. Repeat. The stage 2 includes the maturing product. In this stage, the product is becoming increasingly standardized due to expansion in production. The product started growing in other advanced countries. Thus, foreign producers might get benefit of producing product from their home markets. But the demand for highly skilled labor diminishes because of fall in need for flexibility in design. US firms also might establish production facilities in advanced countries. Hence, this will lower their need for exports from the US firms. The stage 3 includes the standardized product. In the final stage, the product becomes completely standardized and price is considered as the main tool. This encourages cost to play an important role in the competitive process. Hence, the country started producing with cheap unskilled labor having access to large amount of capital. The product made progress and have become profitable for the innovative firm. But now the country's advantage has shifted in its location of production because the technology of innovating firm has matured. Due to cheap labor cost, firms of advanced countries are now able to export to US firm. Hence, there has been a shift in the production from high cost sites to the low cost sites in other advanced countries and then to developing countries. Thus, the process continues where advanced countries acquired production advantages over US firms and on the same side, advanced countries are losing advantage over developing countries. Therefore, innovating firms country become a net importer of product whereas developing countries become net exporter of the product. Now let us evaluate the product life cycle theory. In product life cycle theory, it is noted that labor and capital levels identify and analyze the country's production, consumption, export and import. Firms do not play major role in analyzing them. The switching of production showed changing patterns of trade but did not result in loss of market share profitability or competitiveness of the firms. The country's comparative advantage might change. This firm-based theory plays a crucial role in explaining international investment and put greater emphasis in analyzing the impact of technology on product costs. The theory not only is able to recognize the capital mobility across countries, but it also made effort to switch the locus of production from country to the product. Hence, it becomes necessary to match the product by its maturity stage with its location of production so as to analyze competitiveness. However, Vernon's theory holds true during US global dominance, which was from 1945 to 75, because Vernon's argument regarding most products developed in United States seems to be ethnocentric, but it has limited relevance in the modern world. This theory has various limitations. Vernon's theory focuses on technology-based products which mostly experiences modification in production processes as they reach the maturity stage. However, it does not take into account the consideration either resource-based products or services that are not recognized by stages of maturity. This theory is more appropriate for products which eventually fall victim to mass production and therefore cheap labor forces. Though the theory seems of limited relevance, but all other things considered, the theory aimed at bridging a gap between traditional trade theories and modern trade theories, in which mobility of capital, technology, information and firms is better than classical theories. Now let us summarize what we have learned so far. 
modern theories play an important role in explaining the pattern of international trade. In contrast to traditional theories, these theories are recognized as form specific which emerged after World War II. Evolution of these theories is basically due to rapid growth of multinational corporations in post-war international economy. The fundamental reason for switching from traditional to modern theories is basically because of MNC's expansion and intra-industry trade that were not taken into account by traditional theories. Modern firms based theories are categorized as country similarity theory, product life cycle theory, Potter's national competitive advantage model and new trade theory. Dimensions of trade have been taken into account to distinguish between traditional and modern theories of trade. All theories of trade examine that why it is beneficial for a country to engage in international trade, but modern theories of trade form the basis of the trade. Newer theories of trade can have assurance of having comparative advantage, but the source of this comparative advantage is more subtle. Sometimes this does not even exist in autocratic situation, closed economy, but helps in developing open trade. Country similarity theory was developed by Swedish economist Staffan Linder in 1961, which states that trade of manufactured goods should occur between countries having similar per capita income. The underlying assumption of this theory is that countries have similar per capita income will not have different consumer tastes and preferences. Hence, the theory asserts homogeneity in this regard. Raymond Vernon's product life cycle theory suggests that pattern of international trade is analyzed when a new product is introduced. Its relevance in the modern world is limited. According to this theory, a shift in trade flow of a product goes through three stages, namely new product stage, maturity product stage and standardized product stage. The consequences of this firm based theory is that over time an innovating firm becomes the net importer and developing countries firm becomes a net exporter. There are however some expectations that examine the impact of this theory on product manufacturing trade. Products have short life cycle, luxury products where cost don't matter. Products requiring specialized knowledge differentiated products will experience less if any impact of a life cycle stage thank you